I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. So we've been reading the Ministry of Alma, setting the church in order throughout the land of the Nephites. First in Zarahemla, and then in Gideon, that was in the ninth year of the reign of the judges. And in the tenth year he preaches throughout Melech, and then goes to Ammonihah. Now we just read, he returns to, you know, he's kicked out of Ammonihah, he, an angel sends him back, he meets up with Amulek, and the two of them go together to preach in Ammonihah. But before we read their preachings, let us return a moment to the Lamanites and the sons of Mosiah. Most of the big events of their mission happened in the first year or two. They go down in the first year of the reign of the Judges, approximately 91 B.C. Within that same year, Lamoni is converted. By the end of that year, possibly in the early months of the second year, Lamoni's father is converted, and he proclaims religious liberty throughout the land, and the rest of the sons of Mosiah. Ammon, of course, stays in Ishmael, but all the rest of them spread out throughout the land of the Lamanites, preaching the gospel. That's where we left it, because they preached for many, many years. Now, that brought us up to about the fifth year of the reign of the Judges. Now, since we're in the tenth year of the reign of the Judges with Alma, we're going to read, this will be the second half of chapter 23. Chapter 23 began the religious liberty and talked about the spreading of the gospel. And that, as I said, brings us to about the fifth year. We finish chapter 23, and this brings us up to the ninth or tenth year of the reign of the Judges. Probably in the tenth year of the reign of the Judges. So let us finish this out. The last time we read in this chapter, we read the first seven verses. So now we pick it up in verse 8, and we will read to the end of the chapter. Now these are they who were converted unto the Lord. The people of the Lamanites were in the land of Ishmael, and also the people of the Lamanites were in the land of Madoni, and also the people of the Lamanites were in the city of Nephi, and also the people of the Lamanites who were in the land of Shilom, and who were in the land of Shemlon, and in the city of Lemuel, and in the city of Shemnilam. And these are the names of the cities of the Lamanites which were converted unto the Lord, and these are they that laid down their weapons of rebellion, yea, all their weapons of war, and they were all Lamanites. And the Amalekites were not converted, save only one. Neither were any of the Amulonites, but they did harden their hearts, and also the hearts of the Lamanites in that part of the land wheresoever they dwelt, yea, in all their villages and all their cities. Therefore we have named all the cities of the Lamanites in which they did repent and come to the knowledge of the truth, and were converted. And now it came to pass that the king of those who were converted were desirous that they might have a name that whereby they might be distinguished from their brethren. Therefore the king consulted with Aaron and many of their priests concerning the name that they should take upon them, that they might be distinguished. And it came to pass that they called their name Anti-Nephi-Lehi's, and they were called by this name and were no more called Lamanites. And they began to be a very industrious people, yea, and they were friendly with the Nephites. Therefore they did open a correspondence with them, and the curse of God did no more follow them. Now this is a short reading, but there's a lot of stuff here, really. I don't know, maybe not a lot of stuff, but there's a few very important things to note. So first of all, just curiosity, we have these seven cities. And it's not just cities, there are lands. The land of Ishmael, the land of Madoni, land of Shilom, land of Shemlon, and then we have city of Lemuel, city of Shemnalim, and city of Nephi. So... The lands most likely are larger areas where you have kind of a capital city area and surrounding villages. The cities are just the city. We have these seven places where the Lamanites are all converted. And it doesn't say that I'm not saying, and I don't think it's trying to imply, that everybody in these lands were converted. But the majority of Lamanites in these lands were converted. I do find it interesting that among the Amalekites there was one man converted. We are not told anything about this man, not even his name, but he was converted. I find that interesting. It's fun though. But now we get to the real important stuff. They want to distinguish themselves. And they say the king over this people. This is most likely Lamoni's father. And this indicates that by this time, there is a division among the Lamanites and that the Lamanites are no longer recognizing the authority of that high king. The king he, he was king over all the land, but there's already factions drawing the line saying we're not going to follow you. So now they say, well, we're going to separate ourselves. We're not going to call ourselves Lamanites anymore. The name they choose is significant. Anti-Nephi-Lehi's. 
Why do we have this? Why is this the name chosen? Because they're not Nephites. That's what anti-Nephi-Lehi, that's what it means. We're not Nephites, but we are descended from Lehi. So we're claiming the title of Lehi, we're claiming the name of Lehi as our ancestor, because we no longer want to be associated with the son of Lehi that we are descended from. We are Lehites, but we are not descended from Nephi, and we do not want to be associated with Laman. That's the reason for this name. It's actually a very, very beautiful name. But then we have that last two things, that last verse. They open up a cons- correspondence with the Nephites. Now in the fifth year, we have an army of Lamanites attacking the Nephites. Now we have a correspondence with this people. They are friendly with the Nephites. They are talking. They are trading. And so we have this back and forth going on. And then it says that the curse no longer followed them. In other words, and this is a little bit my own speculation, my own interpretation here, but it says that no longer follow them. Later on, we read that the curse is taken from the people. But for the anti nephi Lehi's, the curse ceases to follow them. And what this means to me is that each succeeding generation becomes less dark. The curse was the dark skin, and as the generations pass on, the skin becomes less dark. And when you marry, when a Nephite marries an anti nephi Lehi, their children aren't Lamanites anymore. They are Nephites, or they are anti nephi Lehi's. And that's what it means by the curse no longer following them. That it becomes a gradual thing that it is, it is taken out of their posterity. Generation by generation until it disappears completely. Now I do wonder, we have Alma preaching up there with Zarahemla and all that going on. Did this correspondence that it talks about start while Alma was still the chief judge? Now I actually don't think that the correspondence went as far as Zarahemla. I think they used to open the correspondence with the border, maybe Gideon, Melech, those areas. They were opening up a correspondence with the Nephites that were in their immediate area. Because, or it started after Alma left the judgment seat. Because as we will read later, Alma is actually, when he meets the sons of Mosiah again, he doesn't know what's been going on. He, doesn't, he, he has not gotten the news yet. And so that would indicate that he was not in the loop when it came to this correspondence between the Nephites and the Lamanites. And I think that is because they were either communicating with the border towns, or it happened after Alma left the judgment seat, or both. But that will be the end of this, and now we are going to turn back to the story of Ammonihah in chapter 9. Because at this time, these people take upon themselves the name of anti nephi Lehi's at about the same time that Alma is preaching in Zarahemla and Gideon, and even in Ammonihah. Anyways, that is where we leave it, and I will see you in chapter 9.